Hello everyone, I'm Cheng Hao from Stanford University. Today I'm going to introduce my work titled Landscape Phenology and Soil Moisture Dynamics Influenced by Irrigation in a Desert Urban Environment, which is the Phoenix metropolitan area as shown in this background. First, I'd like to give you a big background of Phoenix. Phoenix is the largest city located in the northeastern reaches of the Sonoran Desert. The population there is over 4 million. The summer there is usually extremely hot. Daily maximum temperature can easily reach 45 degrees Celsius. Last summer there is also had several record-breaking heat waves. For example, this news used the title Phoenix has a record-breaking heat wave with 50, 50 days of 110 degree weather. Note that here 110 degrees Fahrenheit is about 43 or 44 degrees Celsius. According to climate projections, the extreme heat waves in this region will be even more frequent in the near future. While this actually poses a great challenge to the urban residents in terms of the heat stress and thermal comfort during hot days. Many studies have investigated various heat mitigation strategies in this region. As an important component of a green infrastructure, irrigation has been identified to be very effective in reducing both surface and air temperatures, mainly through evaporated cooling. These two figures here show uh, two common practice, uh, common irrigation practice in uh, Phoenix. The first one is a spray or a, sp a sprinkler irrigation, and the second one is flood irrigation. Uh, well, in one of our previous studies, we quantified the relationship between irrigation amount and cooling effect, which is a reduction of either surface or air temperature in U.S. cities during hot summers. We used the WARF numerical, numerical simulations, and the figures here show the results of two scenarios over Arizona. Well, basically, this is a Phoenix metropolitan area here. Uh, the left two figures are irrigation depths, while the right two figures are the corresponding surface temperature change. Apparently, higher cooling effect can be achieved via more irrigation. However, Phoenix is also facing severe water shortage issues, as you may know, including both limited and shrinking supply and the rapid growing demand. So it is very critical to understand how irrigation can affect the soil moisture and uh, soil moisture dynamics and vegetation phenology here. The landscapes uh, in Phoenix Metro can be broadly classified into three categories. Natural vegetation is in general water limited. These include a shrub, grass, saguaro, and other different types of vegetation. Common crops in the agricultural land include cotton, wheat, and alfalfa. These crops are highly dependent on water input from irrigation and precipitation, as well as fertilizer. This is also the case for urban areas. Common urban vegetation includes grass and trees in golf courses, urban areas, urban parks, I mean, uh, and uh, along the street. In this study, I use remote sensing data sets uh, to, uh, and numerical simulations trying to an answer the following three questions. How does vegetation seasonality differ under different land cover conditions? Is rainfall the driver of vegetation seasonality under different land cover conditions? How do irrigation schedules can regulate the uh, soil moisture and plant water stress? The findings of this study will inform better planning of irrigation to promote vegetation growth and heat mitigation. To answer the first question, here I retrieved the remotely sensed vegetation and land cover data sets for the period of 2001 to 2015. The land cover data sets are NLCD data sets. Vegetation data sets are MODIS, NDVI, and EVI data sets, which have a temporal resolution of uh, 16 days and spatial resolution of 250 meters. Uh, here I derived the time series of NDVI and EVI over shrubland, grassland, agricultural land, and four different types of urban areas. Note that I will only use EVI as a vegetation parameter in numerical simulations to better reflect the temporal dynamics of vegetation growth. To answer the second question, I downloaded daily precipitation data measured at the Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport for the same 15 years. The precipitation data set also serves as one of the meteorological forcing data sets for the numerical simulations. For the last question, I used a modified point scale soil water, soil water balance model that incorporates irrigation module. This, module. this model can simulate the dynamics of soil moisture and plant water stress. The model parameters are mainly based on remotely sensed data sets, site observations, and literature. 
irrigation scheduling uh, is determined for uh, agricultural land and urban area based on two Arizona Meteorological Network or AZMAP stations. The soil water balance model I used is based on the concept of a simple bucket model. So basically the change of soil moisture content over time is equal to the summation of precipitation and irrigation minus the intersection by uh, vegetation canopy, runoff, evapotranspiration, and leakage through the bottom of the soil column. Uh, representative vegetation types are also used over different land covers. For urban vegetation, I assume the turf grass was common overseeding practice. So we have Bermuda grass for May, uh, from May to September, and rye grass dominate from October to April next year. For agricultural land, two common crop types with crop rotation are assumed. From April to October, we, we use cotton, while in winter, we have winter wheat. For shrubland, a common species, uh, creole salt bush, is used here. Now let's take a look at the results. This figure shows the precipitation uh, time series and temporal change of NDVI and EVI over different land cover types. Here, uh, the pink region marks the monsoon season with precipitation higher than uh, 100 mm, and blue region is the winter season with high precipitation. In general, EVI and NDVI they are quite consistent, although NDVI is a bit higher. On average, agriculture has the highest EVI much higher than urban areas and shrubland. Grassland has the highest temporal variability as suggested by the high uh, value of co co coefficient of variation. Uh, this figure here shows the mean annual cycle of EVI along with precipitation, maximum and minimum temperature observed in Phoenix. It is quite interesting that there is a clear annual bimodality for almost the all land cover types, see uh, these two gray bands here. Although the underlying drivers are different. For shrubland and grassland, the highest peaks are in spring, mainly because of the winter precipitation. While for agriculture and uh, urban areas, the drivers are crop rotation and repeated grass overseeding. This is also very clear from these uh, satellite images here. Uh, you may observe the, the clear color change over agriculture and urban areas over time. I then run the soil water balance model to examine the soil moisture and vegetation phenology over different land covers if there is no irrigation. I like to point out that all results are averaged over continuous 1000 year simulations. This will ensure we are simulating more realistic seasonality. The first plot here shows the monthly relative soil moisture for three land cover types, with arrow bars showing the standard deviation of 1000 year simulations. In general, during pre monsoon season, like in June, Phoenix Metro received very low uh, rainfall. This leads to the lowest soil moisture and highest plant water stress. The second plot shows the simulated ET, leakage, and runoff of vegetation over three land cover types. The bimodal ET peaks are quite clear. This is also quite consistent with the observed vegetation indices, as I mentioned in the last slide. Due to relatively shallow uh, uh, rooting depths, only urban areas have leakage and runoff. The last plot here shows the probability density functions of static plant water stress. Here, the probability of uh, for 0 and 1, uh, no stress and full stress, is not shown. It is quite clear that the water stress is very high. The average stress is uh, uh, almost above uh, 0.9 for all three types, while agriculture on, on average has the highest water stress. So based on the observed ET data, precipitation, and interception from literature, I designed four irrigation schedules for urban and agricultural areas. Daily constant, daily seasonal, monthly constant, and monthly, se monthly seasonal. They basically have identical uh, annual irrigation amount, but differ in frequency and size. So uh, these two plots above show the dynamic relative soil moisture over time, while the bottom two show the probability density function of soil moisture. In general, irrigation can substantially alleviate plant water stress, but the improvement varies with irrigation scheduling. Based on mean water stress, daily seasonal practice is the best among all schedules for urban areas, followed by daily constant and two monthly schedules. Daily seasonal practice is also the best for agriculture, followed by monthly seasonal schedule. Uh, here are the answers to the three questions I, I, I asked in the very beginning. Next time, I'm planning to consider more thorough model calibration and validation based on, for example, ray analysis data sets and soil moisture measurements. 
and here are the references. Thank you.